we've been able to dial in kind of the starting point, like our habits, uh, what's holding us back, what's, wh where are we playing small. Um, now we need to know where we want to go. We need to have a vision. Um, I'll keep bringing up the Buddhist monastery. Uh, I was really able to nail down my vision uh, at the Buddhist monastery, uh, where I wanted to go. Uh, and we're going to go through some exercises um, that I've done that have helped me with that, um, with your own personal life and in your business. So I'm super excited for this. And we're good to go. So next section is all about creating your vision. So we're going to do some journaling. We're going to start off with some journaling. And the question is, or the date is October 18th, 2020, one year from today, 365 days from this point, what does your life look like? So we have a prompt inside of the workbook. So if you want to use that workbook and write it out, or if you're more of a journaler, awesome. But it's a year from today, what do you want your life to look like? That's every aspect of your life. That's finan... Yep. Page seven. Page seven. Um, so that's financially, that's with your business, that's with your fitness, that's with your faith, that's with everything. What do you want your life to look like one year from today? All right. So we're going to go into another journaling exercise on values. So I believe it is in your workbook. Um, so... When I was going through burnout, breakdown, um, went through adrenal fatigue, uh, I, I didn't know what I really stood for. Um, and I read a book called the, the Values Factor by Dr. Martini. Really good book. It got me on the right path. And then it wasn't until I went to the Buddhist monastery and started identifying my values. Um, and uh, the question that I asked myself was, when in my life was I most happy? When in my life was I most happy, joyous, and fulfilled? When was I just, oh, in flow? And I identified it, it was when I was 18 years old. And I was just finishing up high school, um, had an amazing girlfriend, uh, was playing a lot of pickup sports, uh, and I just had a group of friends that we would just joke around, do hood rat stuff, right? And I looked at myself and I'm like, I don't have any of that in my life right now. Like, that's why I'm not happy. That's why I'm burnt out. I'm doing all this work to avoid, like, my life. And after I asked myself that question, I identified the things that I need in my life to be happy and fulfilled. So what I want you guys to do right now is think back to the time in your life where you were most happy. If it's right now, then I identify those things that are just making you really happy and joyous. Because if I was to do this again, it would just be everything that's right now. So my values are very specific. I'll give you my top three. So um, loving relationship. I identified that because I had an awesome relationship back in, um, uh, back in high school, and uh, it's actually something. So loving relationship, I knew I needed to seek that out, um, and I found Kate. Kate's my top value. Um, and then number two is, uh, is community of friends. Um, so having that community, and I found that with Brad um, and, uh, uh, and Kyle and the rest of the crew in San Diego uh, when I moved out here. Um, and then number three is actually pick up sports. So I go to LA Fitness uh, at least three times a week and play pick up sports. And I've never been so happy and fulfilled in my life. Um, so right now, think back to the time where you're happiest in your life and identify those things that put you into flow that really filled, filled up your cup. With the values, they're, they're actual things, they're tangible. It's not integrity, honesty, like these types of values are things we can actually feel, touch, smell. Um, and this is what I put in my calendar at the start of every week. Um, I actually have 
uh, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. every single morning, uh, marked off on my calendar for uh, coffee and Kate time. So we go downtown, get coffee uh, every morning, and it lights me up because we're always joking and having fun with e each other. So make sure that you're plugging these values into your calendar first and working on developing these um, before, uh, before you put business in. Create your business around your life, not the other way around. Um, so we're going to go into a little bit of a teaching section here, and uh, uh, this is something we're going to move from the personal to business. And I would take a picture of this, or I would write this down. It actually, is it in the packets? Uh, is there? No? Okay, it's not in there. So I would take a picture or write this down, because um, this is important. Um, your vision drive your goals, your goals drive your planning, your planning drive your resources, your resources drive your execution, and your execution drive your results. So it all starts with your vision. Where are you going to be 10 years out? What's your three-year picture? What's your one-year uh, plan? Right? So what's your vision? What do you want to create? And then you can create your goals backwards from there. And then when you have goals, you need to plan. How are you going to reach those goals? And then when you plan, you're going to need resources to accomplish those things. And then those resources are going to allow you to execute. And then when you're executing, you're going to get results. So it's a simple breakdown of what do you want out of your life? You start with your vision and ultimately getting crystal clear on what you want, creating goals around that and planning around that, and so on and so forth. So, for your business, the first thing I want to start out with is a simple target. So your 10-year target for your business. Typically, this is, a rev this is revenue. It can also be like number of customers, but um, our 10-year target is $50 million in revenue annually. Um, I've bounced between so much, and I've, uh, we do quarterly planning sessions with the team. I'm like, do we want to have a nine-figure business? Do we don't? Like, what we've come to is $50 million in revenue 10 years from now is exactly where we want to be, um, where we can uh, service people and not be too big. Um, so we usually overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in three, three years or 10 years. So how we set this up, so what we're going through right now is our, how we do our quarterly planning sessions with our team and, and really nailing in, hey, do we want to keep this 10-year target? Next is, what's our three-year picture look like? So we go from 10-year target, which is just revenue, right? What do we want to be at 10 years? And then we want to get really, really clear on the picture of what we're going to do in three years. And this is quite the lengthy process. Um, but I want you guys to get it started so you have something to go back to to refine um, and, uh, and, and make it more clear. So usually we overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in three years. So the picture where you're gonna be at in three years with your business should be how many employees, um, if you wanna speak on stages, um, uh, who are your partners, what does your business look like, every element of your business uh, with your sales department, marketing department, delivery, are you doing coaching programs, are you selling a software? Just every element of your business gets super clear on what you wanna do. So it can also be, I want to speak on 100 stages uh, that year. I want to do a TED Talk uh, 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 within three years. So what is your three-year picture? Get super clear on where you want to be at in three years and stretch yourself. So just brain dump it right now. It does not need to be perfect. It just needs to be done. Uh, and that's where we'll start with your three-year picture. We're creating our vision right now. We just did our three-year picture, and the next step is creating the one-year plan. So the one-year plan is simple. 
So these are five to seven projects or goals. No more than that, no less than that. Because if we have too many, we're not going to get it all done. If we have too little, it's just not enough. So these are five to seven goals, very specific goals that are tangible, uh, that are, um, so you set your revenue goal first, right? For your one-year plan. So if your revenue goal, let's say, is a million dollars, maybe something that will help you get to a million dollars um, is uh, hiring a sales team or having a sales team of X amount of people by X date, right? So these are five to seven things that will allow you to hit your revenue goal for that one year that will get you on track and push you towards your three-year picture. So we're just all working back from what our vision is. So make sure that these things are tangible, um, that you can reach them, um, and uh, you can get them done in a year. So you set your revenue goal first. Where do I want to be uh, in a year? And let's do one year from today. Usually you do this uh, your fiscal year, right? So let's do one year from today. And then uh, your revenue goal for that. And then uh, your five to seven uh, projects uh, or goals that will help you reach your uh, one year revenue target and build scalability and sustainability in your business at the same time. So, does anybody have any questions on that? Jeff? So, I'll leave it up to you guys. You can either do 12, or one year from today, or you can start January 1st, wherever you feel more comfortable with. How to set 90-day goals like a CEO. Uh, this was a major, major key that turned my six-figure business into a seven-figure business. Uh, the 90-day year. Um, every 90 days, every quarter, looking at your business and saying these are our rocks, these are the goals that we need to hit over the next 90 days to move our business forward. So this is exactly how you're going to make quarter four of 2019 your best quarter of your life in business. Does that sound good? Give me a woo. That was actually a pretty good one. Thank you. So <laughs> that looks awful. Um, so we transitioned the slides, but that's kind of small, uh, but it's all good. Um, so for the next 90 days, you want to set a revenue target. Uh, so we use uh, standard and stretch goals. So for example, uh, your um, standard goal can be X number, and then your stretch goal is what allows you to push through your standard goal. Because a lot of times when we get close to our goal, we kind of ease off the gas pedal. So we set standard and stretch goals for our revenue goals, so we don't ease off the gas pedal when we get close, and we bust through it. So right now, laser, I want you to write down in the next 90 days, at the, by the end of this quarter, by December 31st, right? Um, what, what standard and stretch goal do you want to set in terms of revenue? So just laser, write it down. And then from there, identify your three to five projects, your three to five goals um, uh, that you need to accomplish over the next 90 days to hit your revenue goal and build sustainability and scalability into your business, just like the one-year plan. So no more, than, uh, no more than five, no less than three. Um, and... Uh, uh, examples, complete and launch webinar to Facebook group, generate over 30K by October 15th, finish version one of new course by November 15th, hire and onboard a sales rep by December 31st. So we don't have too much time, but if you guys want to write that down right now um, and just start thinking about it, what are those three to five things over the next 90 days that are going to allow me to hit my revenue goal and build sustainability and scalability into my business? Whew. So write it down, laser. And then we're going to lunch soon, so if you need to uh, identify exactly what those are, uh, we can do it at lunch. Um, and then step number three, after you have your rocks in place, those things that you need to get done over 90 days, 
Um, identify who or what you need. So examples, if you haven't done a webinar before, you might need a webinar coach uh, or webinar software or uh, uh, a copywriter for your emails. So identify what are those resources that you need to accomplish those, right? Then last is execute. What holds us back so much, uh, like especially in the first, every entrepreneur struggles with shiny object syndrome, right? So what these rocks, what these 90-day goals help you with is for you to get back on track. Like, oh, I want to do that five-minute VSL, but that wasn't in my, like, that wasn't in my 90-day rocks. So tell your brand to shut the fuck up and get back to your uh, three to five rocks and just focus on those things because you identified at the start of the quarter that those were the things that you and your team needed to get accomplished to hit your revenue goals and build sustainability and scalability in your business. Like before I was doing this, I was just going all willy nilly and I was just trying to get back to 50K month after 50K month, right? Um, and it didn't allow me to take a step back and realize I'm burning myself out. I need to hire a team. I need like to get to the goals. It wasn't just 50K month after 50K month. Like, I wanted to break the million dollar marker, right? Um, and when you allow yourself to step back, to plan, to work back from your vision, to your goals, to your planning, to your resources, to your execution, um, that is when you actually get to where you wanna go. And, it, and the 90 day, uh, 90 day year, planning every single quarter allows you to get back on that track.